talk about ovarian masses now. Um, and often this is either palpated on exam or you're going to see it on, on ultrasound. And there's a bunch of different causes. And they can be either a cyst or it can be a benign tumor or a malignant tumor. So we'll, talk, we'll start with a cyst. The first thing that can cause a, a ovarian cyst is a follicular cyst. It's the most common thing. It's just very simple. It happens when your mature follicle does not rupture in the ovary. So it stays in the ovary and continues to grow. Um, let me just illustrate that. So you got this nice ovary here. And I've drawn, gro drawn it grossly out of proportion. And so... Um, you have this follicle that doesn't grow, I mean, it doesn't rupture, and it stays there, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, you get this big cyst here. Okay, so decalutein cysts are next. These are uh, a result of ovarian hyperstimulation by beta-HCG. Um, so anything that increases beta-HCG by a ton, and specifically, that would be choriocarcinoma or molar pregnancies. And we'll talk about those more, but those, you can have like beta-HCGs of 100,000 or something. They're going to stimulate the ovary, stimulate the ovary, and actually stimulate both ovaries, the HCG. HCG stimulates, and it's going to cause growth of these follicles, and you're going to put a bunch of follicles. And um, basically, this is what a thecalotein cyst is. So now we're going to talk about ovarian surface epithelial tumors. And just to throw back to the anatomy, remember we talked about there were three things uh, that made up the ovary. The surface epithelial tumors, um, a surface epithelium, and then there's germ cells, and then there's sex cords. So sex cords include the theca cells, include granulosa cells, and also fibrocytes. And all these components of the ovary can eventually de develop both benign as well as malignant tumors. Surf ovarian surface epithelial tumors, these are the most common type of tumors. You can classify them in a couple ways. First of all, they can be benign or malignant. Second of all, they can be serous or mucinous. So benign tumors are simple cysts. This is a simple cyst here. You can see it's a nice circle. There's nothing in it, just clear black fluid. The blackness is the fluid. And it's usually in premenopausal women. Malignant tumors, on the other hand, will present as complex cysts. So that's this. This is a big complex cyst. Look, first of all, there's a bunch of septations here. So you'll see a bunch of little holes. And it's just larger. And so you're going to see these in postmenopausal women. And then the other one is serous versus mucinous. Serous tumors usually produce watery fluid. And they usually present bilaterally. And this is the most common type of benign as well as malignant neoplasm. Mucinous tumors, on the other hand, produce mucus-like fluid. It's obvious. Okay. So benign surface epithelial tumors, mainly there's serous cyst adenoma, and you can tell from the oma that it's a benign tumor, and that has fallopian tube-like epithelium. And just remember that fallopian tubes also have serous cells, so that's why it makes sense serous cyst adenomas have fallopian tube-like epithelium. And mucinous cyst adenomas have mucus secreting epithelium. And there's two other types of uh, surface epithelial tumors that are benign. There's the endometrioma. That's basically endometriosis whenever it reaches the ovary. And as we reviewed before, it presents as a chocolate cyst. And then Brenner tumors are made of a bladder-like epithelium. And these are benign. The three Bs of the Brenner tumor. Now we can go to the malignant surface epithelial tumors. And again, very similar to the benign ones, except for now we have a serous cyst adenocarcinoma, which um, basically tells you it's malignant. And it's associated with somoma bodies, which are these, which are basically just layers of calcification. And the somoma bodies, there's multiple cancers that can cause it. And I just I have a little mnemonic that I like to use to remember which ones can present with a somoma body. So one is papillary um, carcinoma of the thyroid. And then number two is serous cyst adenocarcinoma of the ovary. And then three is meningioma. meningioma. And then the fourth would be um, mesothelioma, which is the, the which is the cancer in the um, basically the lung lining. So all of these can present with a somoma body. And remember, this is the serous cyst adenocarcinoma. Uh, mucinous cyst adenocarcinomas do not have somoma bodies. Um, these produce a bunch of mucus. And then what happens is the possible complication is pseudomyxoma peritinei. 
it's a big long word for massive accumulation of mucinous fluid intraperitoneally and that's because um uh, the ovaries are on the edge of the peritoneum so if this ovarian cyst adenocarcinoma with a bunch of mucus uh, ruptures all that mucus is going to go into the peritoneum and if you ever google a picture you can see they have like buckets full of mucus it's disgusting it's a ton of mucus and these tumors they uh, metastasize intraperitoneally and they present late with symptoms of uh, abdominal bloating increased abdominal girth decreased appetite so as you can tell these are very non-specific abdominal symptoms so i think that's the best way to sum summarize them non-specific abdominal symptoms and note that these present late so that's why these ovarian tumors have a really bad prognosis it's not like that they're more um more dangerous or they kill you faster it's just that we detect them later so by the time we detect them patients are stage four stage three so they don't do as well and the risk factors for these are either genetic mutations which include include having the BRCA gene which is uh, put, also puts you at risk for breast cancer as well as the Lynch syndrome also known as HNPCC which is the colon cancer uh, do you remember the other two colon cancer endometrial cancer ovarian cancer and then finally, lifetime increased ovulations. Um, basically, the more ovulation, ovulation is a traumatic event to the surface epithelium when it ruptures and basically damage. So if you do more of that, you're going to get increased risk for cancer. Basically, that's never never getting pregnant. It seems like I've written this is the same thing, basically. Not getting pregnant means that you will ovulate more because pregnancy is a time where you don't ovulate for about nine months. So that's it for ovarian surface epithelial tumors. So germ cell tumors are the second most common type of ovarian tumor, um, making up 15 to 25 percent of ovarian tumors. And this is in contrast to the surface epithelial tumors. This is mainly in premenopausal women. So benign tumors is one. There's a mature cystic teratoma. This is also known as a dermoid cyst. So you have to know both names. And this contains elements from all three layers of the all three germ layers. So endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. And this is a picture of it. And as you can tell, that's pretty disgusting. A teratoma is actually um, I don't know, it's Greek or it's Latin or something for monster. Okay. So that's basically. I mean, if you look at that, it's, it's, it's disgusting. And so there's like teeth, there's hair, there's skin. Um, and I just think teratoma, if you see like a, a mass with all, all the features of the face, teeth, hair, skin, um, that's, a cystic, that's a cystic teratoma. And sometimes it can present with pain or ovarian torsion because it can get heavy. It's pretty heavy. You look at all this stuff. And so it can just cause the ovaries to twist. And that can be pain, like super painful. That's ovarian torsion. The other thing that can happen is struma ovarii. And that's when the teratoma is mainly made of thyroid tissue. So when you get extra thyroid tissue, extra thyroid hormone leading to hyperthyroidism. So uh, malignant tumors, there's a bunch of different types. So the first one is immature teratoma in contrast to the mature cystic teratoma. This is again a fetal tissue origin. There's no tumor markers and usually it's associated with neural tissue. So the second germ cell malignant tumor is a dysgerminoma. It originates from the oocytes, and the tumor marker here is LDH. LDH is elevated when there is a dysgerminoma. And this is the female version of a testicular seminoma, which we'll see later. And on histology, you're going to see fried egg cells. So you see this, this like egg. So there's the egg white, and then there's the egg yolk. So that's a fried egg cell that's associated with dysgerminoma. A yolk sac tumor, which is also called an endodermal sinus tumor, is from the yolk sac, obviously. And then there's two things that make AFP commonly, the yolk sac and the liver. So AFP will be elevated here in the yolk sac tumor. And you classically see Schiller-Duval bodies. you got to memorize this. You're going to see this a lot, so you're just going to memorize it. But it's central vessel surrounded by tumor cells and... The next the, and last cancer is a non-gestational chorio cancer, choriocarcinoma. I say non-gestational because often choriocarcinoma is associated with um, pregnancy, and we're going to talk about that later. But this is non-gestational, and um, it originates from placental tissue. And placental tissue makes HCG, so beta-HCG will be up. And so this cancer is composed of syncytiotrophoblasts, which makes the HCG, and cytotrophoblasts, um, but there's no villi. And remember, these two are components of the placenta. 
And this super high HDG that they make can lead to a thecocyst due to, due to the ovarian hyperstimulation. All right, so moving on to the sex cord tumors. Remember the sex cords are like the granulosa cells, theca cells, fibrocytes. So granulosa theca tumors are associated with call exner bodies on histology. I just remember that because granny likes to call you, okay? Granny loves to call, so call exner. And these are granulosa cells arranged, so the granulosa cells arranged around collections of eosinophilic fluid right there. Um, and so you get symptoms of hyperestrogenemia because remember that granulosa cells make estrogen. So uh, in kids, you're going to see pre precocious puberty. Uh, in, in more adult women, you're going to see heavy uh, uterine bleeding. And finally, you can see endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer. The next thing is Sertoli Leydig cell tumors. Um, and on histology, there are tubules made up of Sertoli cells and Leydig cells in the interstitial. Um, this uh, so, remember that in the males, the Sertoli and Leydig cells, or Leydig cells specifically, make androgens. So you get symptoms of hyperandrogen, hyperandrogenism. Excuse me. Um, you get amenorrhea. You get acne, hirsutism, voice deepening, clitoromegaly. Just remember hyperandrogenism. You don't really have to remember all those. It's pretty obvious. And then fibroma, finally. It's a benign tumor with bundles of fibroblasts on histology. And it presents with Meg syndrome. So this is a basically a triad of, of a fibroma on the ovaries and ascites and pleural fusion. So honestly, they don't really know why it happens, but it's basically fibroma plus a fusion is Meg syndrome. Okay.